two weeks ago, I was in a conference in Qatar. It was an Islamic psychology conference. And before I traveled, some sisters contacted me and they said, we have here with us in Qatar a woman, a psychologist, a professor of psychology from the Islamic University of Gaza, a Jam al Islami of Gaza. And she's a psychologist like you, and she wants to meet you. And I said, of course, I'd be honored. Please, please ask her to come to the conference. They said, look, we're going to warn you. She has a difficult story. I'm listening. They said, she is the only one out of her entire family who was pulled out of the rubble. When that building fell, everybody, mother, father, husband, children, siblings, nieces, nephews, everybody. And when they pulled her out and she realized she was still alive, she started crying. Not for them. She said, Ya Allah, what did I do that upset you so much that you didn't allow me to be a martyr like them? Ya Allah, what did I do that I couldn't be a shahida like them? Imagine. Fast forward to the conference. I'm there. It's lunchtime. We break. People are socializing and meeting each other. I'm saying salam to many people. And here comes a sister of the many sisters who are saying salam, and I'm saying salam to her. And then she says, and she stops and she says, Dr. Rania, I'm Shayma. Ahlaw Sahlan. I'm Shayma. I'm not, it's not clicking. Why? Huge smile on her face. Happy, happy person. And she kept saying another and a third time, Dr. Rania, I'm Dr. Shayma Abu Sha'ban from Gaza. Oh. SubhanAllah. I stop, freeze, like, you know, when you're just like shocked. I couldn't even recognize her or understand that she was somebody who just weeks, just weeks prior, she was pulled out of the rubble. And here she is smiling. I say, please, please, let's sit down. And she sits down along with some of the other sisters and she begins telling her story. Ya Allah, what happened after this? She said, I had nowhere to go. My family is gone. My house is gone. My university is gone. Everything is gone, 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 gone. What, where do I go? She says to me, I went from house to house, to tent to tent, to place to place, to empty building, to empty hospital, to empty room, anything, anywhere I could find. I had no one. And I was hungry. And I was hungry. I was hungry and like a hunger you don't understand. She said, you don't understand how much salty water I drank. That's all that's available, just to survive. Salty water, salty water, salty water. And no food. And when finally, finally, days later, somebody gave her a fourth, a fourth of a piece of bread. She said, it was like they put a gold bar in my hand. That's what it was like. And she took the first bite. And then she said, I got so distracted, I started taking pictures of the bread. That's how long I hadn't seen bread or touched it or eaten it. She goes from place to place until finally she gets a call. And the call is, you have no family. And here are some children who are parentless, who also don't have any family and who are injured. Accompany them to Qatar for medical treatment. So she becomes the surrogate mother, if you will, of a little girl who has casts on each of her four limbs, who needs to go for medical treatment and physical rehab. And she becomes like her mother in Qatar. And that's what she was doing there. And they said to her, Allah, you keep asking why Allah didn't take you as a martyr yet. However, there is a reason why Allah still wants you on this earth. There is still something he needs from you that is not done yet. The fact that she's a psychologist 
when she went there, all of these parentless children, she started to work with them. And you know what her, subhanAllah, you know what her specialty in psychology was at the university? Trauma. Trauma of warfare. So she's taken on these children. 